Hey everybody, so today we're gonna go through the exact steps I do when I'm looking to build a, your order is on the way, a post-purchase, an order confirmation, an order update, that kind of email where we want it to be dynamic, I wanted to reserve them their order details, where it's going to, uh, tracking URLs, all that good stuff you wanna have in a post-purchase type email, we're gonna cover that today. First things first, we need to make sure our data is working correctly. It's coming over into Klaviyo the way we want it. We wanna make sure everything is kind of clean and ready to be used in the template. So first things first, we're gonna go over to the activity feed. When I'm building a post-purchase type email, I actually like to use the order fulfilled metric over the placed order metric. And why that is, is because I feel when the order is fulfilled, you know, there's less chance of a refund. There's less a chance they're actually in talks with customer service right now. It's just a cleaner indicator that the product's on the way to them. It's also a really good opportunity to send them additional messages, kind of warming them up while their order is actually shipped and now on the way to them. So I look at order fulfilled. You can do placed order, but I'm going to stick with order fulfilled for this example. And when I'm looking at the activity feed, I do see that the metric is coming over, it is working. And when I look into this profile, I want to see the data itself. So if you're looking at this uh, line item here, we want to look here and we see all the data coming over. This is exactly what we want. So we are good to go. We have the go ahead to start building. In this example, I'm going to run through starting from scratch. You can use a like post purchase type template that Klaviyo has, but just in case you're kind of starting from scratch, you want to follow along. Normally when I build, I always start from scratch anyways. So let's call this one post-purchased um, test one and create our flow. So first things first, we're going to go over to the metric itself and select that as the trigger and we're going to do fulfilled order. Let's go ahead and drop in our email. In this particular build, I am going to be using Klaviyo's new updated builder. If you don't have this yet, go back into your Klaviyo front end, go to your email template section, and then go on down to create a new template. You'll have two options, classic builder, new builder. Use the new builder. So get things moved over. You're going to need to move it over sooner or later because it's going to be the standard. But go ahead, select the new builder so you can follow along step by step. All right, I'm going to select my template. I already have kind of a branded template I'm going to stick with for this example. All right, and in my branded template, I have some kind of placeholder text, things like that. Don't need to worry about that. We can kind of create a, uh, you know, aesthetic that we're looking for. But first, let's get our table locked down. So first thing, we're going to go over into preview. And I'm going to move my giant head and actually shrink it out of the way. Okay, so over in the preview section, we're gonna come down until we find, in my example, and in most cases, you'll, it may be this way for you too, I'm looking for this truncated section here, which has our line items listed. So open that up by clicking, and we're gonna scroll until we see line items. So just as an example, fulfillment is right here with line items under it. We don't want that. We want the actual line item like by itself, not inside of another section, which is this one right here. So we're going to come down and find the product section underneath here and grab the product title. So you click that, it will auto copy. And now let's drag in our table. So this table is going to be dynamic. It's going to be, if there's more than one item, I want to show every single item. Um, so it's going to be basically what's fueling a very dynamic experience when this email enters someone's inbox. So a little hack here in the original template, it's usually side by side like this, like text and image. I'm not really a fan of that aesthetic. So what I'm going to do is come over to table settings and delete the second column. I'm going to create everything inside of a single column. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do that when we get to actually putting the pieces in. First thing though, we need to get the table dynamic. So, all right, I'm going to paste in our variable and we're going to trim away this piece and this piece. So what I'm left with is what they call a row collection, which is another kind of fancy tech term for basically like when I'm looking through all of the data, what should I be looking for with the items I want to collect? And all of our items are going to start with this event.extra.line underscore items. 
And then this piece we're gonna throw in here, but trim away the S. Why? I can't really give you a really firm answer on that. I just know that you need it to be item because we're gonna make all of our text also kind of match it without the S. Um, I don't know, this is why these things work. I just do the things. Um, the reason why I can't say, but basically we are saying now with this being what we're looking for, now repeat it for everything with item, which is exactly what we want. We want to show every single item. So we want this information here to repeat for every single item. Basically is what it means, right? Um, let's go back. Oh, it did, didn't delete my second column. Let's delete my second column. Let's click done. All right, let's do some formatting. Let's center this. Let's make this a little bit larger for now, just so we can see it really clearly. Okay, let's paste in. Oh no, I lost my variable. Let's go grab our variable again. Okay, so the things we just did before are now going to basically kind of dictate the edits we're going to do to this variable for our product name. Okay, so basically we don't need this piece here because we've already set the row collection and knows what to look for. So we don't need to tell it that. We also want to trim away the S because we told them that the alias, the row alias will be item. So repeating for every single item. So we want that to match. We're also going to delete the zero. This zero represents um, the number the item is. So if you have five items, technically you would have item zero, one, two, three, and four. So put, leaving that zero in there is basically saying don't repeat because there's only one item zero. Um, so we want to delete that because we want it to work for every single item in the person's uh, order summary. Beautiful. We have a product name. So now let's grab the image. So really similar to the abandoned cart sequence uh, tutorial I built. Um, you're going to go down kind of the same thing. We're going to go back into line items. And we're going to go back down into product and you're going to find right here a SRC or a source, which basically is the, the image URL. We're going to grab that. And then right above the product title, we're going to kind of go up. We're going to click here and add image. We're going to paste in our dynamic variable. Same thing. We're going to cut away the first bit, change items to item, delete the zero. We're going to leave this zero. So this is kind of confusing, but you could have several images for a product. And we're just saying serve the very first image that we have in Shopify. We're going to change the width to let's do 400 and see what that looks like and apply. So super confusing. You're not going to be able to see it. You're not going to see a block or anything, but it is there here in the code. Okay. Let's click done and let's do a preview and see what it looks like. Awesome. So with um, this one, we just have the single product. Let's see if we can find a multiple product example, just so we can confirm everything is working smoothly with that as well. And it is. So we have our fanny pack and we have our hydration pack. Lovely. So one thing maybe we want to have is a button for them to go track their order. So let's change this to track my order. And we're going to grab that also inside the data. Because this information doesn't change product to product, it actually will be a copy and paste exactly as you find it inside of their product summary here. So let's scroll until we find URL tracking, which is also inside of our kind of truncated section. All right. Here we are. So depending on your who you ship with, all these things, these can kind of change but you'll have a URL here called tracking underscore URL. Uh, there also is another one. If you use Shopify, that's just uh, order status and you can use that one as well, but we're going to use the tracking URL to make it a very smooth consumer, you know, user experience. We'll paste that in. No need to trim anything. We just want to paste it just as is, you know what? Let's copy this. Let's do a little bit of formatting here, right? So let's center our kind of placeholder text right now. And, um, you know, or maybe we say, yeah, get ready to party. This is kind of a party like brand, you know, use the copy that fits your brand for this one in particular. It is in the kind of like party space, uh, going to concerts, uh, you know, EDM, all that vibe. So we're kind of capturing that here. 
Not exactly that, something like that. That's some real quick, kind of quick, quick copywriting. Let's delete this little block here. Um, adding a little bit of a space here. Okay, so let's do another preview. Let's check it out. So with this button as well, I just want to make sure, um, obviously I can't really show this information, but uh, clicking here, I just want to make sure it's working for this user and it is, so that looks great. Don't forget to double check your mobile view. We want to make sure that that looks really good, which honestly, I think this type of design stacking it uh, is more fitting for mobile. And in most cases, you want to design with mobile first in mind. All right, let's say that we want to add in some more information though, right? So maybe, you know, we want to add in a bit more content before we get to the summary. So for example, let's delete this, right? And let's do this piece and say, um, you know, uh, order total. Maybe we'll have a variable there. Shipping to, eh, it's kind of a, a placeholder, right? Let's go ahead and start grabbing some of that information and plugging it in. So when grabbing data, let's go grab, there should be a mount right here. Again, this is static, so, meaning it does not change or need to repeat or anything. So you just paste in the variable just like that. Let's grab some shipping information as well. So with this one, I went in, put an order total, shipping to, and did some shipping information here. Let's take a look at an example contact. Yeah, so, and then we have the total here. For some reason, this happens with the template. You might have to refresh it, but it put my block down here. But you could see that you could reserve in a lot of these really specific details for someone just to kind of have as an extra element to the template as it's going out to them. All right, I hope this quick tutorial was really helpful on how to grab these variables and plug them into what could be a your order is on the way template, a post purchase template, whatever you want to call it, where you want to reserve exactly what they ordered into an email. This is exactly the steps that I follow. If you have any questions or any comments or any um, requests on what videos you want to see next, put it in the comments below. And if you didn't know, I do consulting and audits of email marketing accounts. So I'll leave a link for that below as well, where you can request for me to jump into your account, do an audit and provide for you a strategy roadmap on optimizations you can make in your Klaviyo account. All right, until next time, y'all, I will talk to you later. Bye.